I'm going to start with the most important question first. Um, who is a better chess player, you or Guy? Ooh, it fucking depends, really. <laughs> depends on who's willing to lie. Uh, you know, in the early days, we were pretty neck and neck. And I used to take him uh, more times than he took me. And he never used to like it. <laughs> Clearly, we're very competitive. But, you know, over the years, he's... He's had a few lessons and he's had a few more lessons and the fucking lessons have gotten in the way of me beating him. So occasionally we're about, you know, I think every couple of games, well, every 10 games, say, he wins about six or seven of those. Uh, he, he, you know, he's maybe six out of 10 versus previous games. He'd be, he'd be other, the other way around. So he's slightly better than me. And I don't ever, I don't ever tell him that I told you that. <laughs> he told me when I asked him this uh, earlier, he said that the only time you win is when you cheat. You no, know, he's a fucking liar. He's an <laughs> out and out liar. He doesn't like it when I win because he's had so many lessons and so many, you know, private lessons over the course of about 10 years that sure. it would really put him at a loss if he does lose. And, and he occasionally he does. If someone has actually never seen uh, a movie that you've done, what is the first one you want them watching and why? Uh, um, you know, I'm very fond of those old Guy Ritchie movies that I did. So I would say maybe Snatch, uh, maybe Lockstock. It would be a flip of the coin on those two, I think. Uh, just because I think they were just so... They were so instrumental in my career um you know i've done more you know more i've done movies that are more focused on me as a cent centerpiece but i think those are early guy Ritchie movies are, are just there are i don't i don't know anyone that couldn't enjoy them really i i completely agree uh jumping into operation fortune I watched it last night i just want to thank you because i needed a movie like that just something fun you know, I just had a lot of fun watching. And I, I have to know, what was your reaction when you saw Hugh Grant and what he was doing with his accent and character first time you saw him on set? Because uh, he, you know, he's so fantastic in, in the role in this. He's uh, he's tremendous in this movie, yeah. I mean, you know, he, he did a magnificent job in The Gentleman, which I was, a, again, I was blown away by, you know, it's another movie I wish I was in. <laughs> Can't be in all of them. Uh, but Hugh is just, he's so versatile, you know, he's a, he's a terrific, he's got such a great depth to his ability. And I think to see him in a role like this, you know, people have seen him in the, you know, he, he did decades of rom-coms and to see him do something like this, it's so complex and so quirky. And I just think he's, he's just, he's just been undersold. I think this is just, really something a, a special skill that people need to see he's just kind of great I, I completely agree um one of the things that i find so fascinating about guy and the way he directs is that uh you might have a script going in but each day he will completely rework everything and you know come up with new things new dialogue can you sort of talk about what it's actually like working with guy on a daily basis when he's so spontaneous yeah i mean it it's uh, it's very unusual because normally you have a semi decent script that you're sort of going to work with, and you kind of know that you've got a scene that's going to work for you, and you know you know you know you know how to navigate that that day's work. But you know <laughs> the script wasn't in great shape, uh, and I think this is a position that mo in most most situations where you'd be panicking like what the hell is going to happen today. But I think Guy likes to put himself under pressure. He likes to throw the script out of the window. He likes to figure out how he can make something out of nothing. And I think that that imminent pressure that he puts on, on him, that he puts on himself brings out the best of him. It's a weird, very unusual thing. But the more difficult of a, a day that's in front of him, the better he is as a director. He's just, it's the, the more pressure, the more flourishing is his dialogue. It just comes from nowhere. And, you know, you'll spend half an hour in the trailer and he'll be 
hashing it together. Uh, and at the end of the day, it looks like it's, you know, he's, he's spent weeks and weeks constructing these great scenes because they're full of this original dialogue. It's, uh, it's an amazing thing to see. So the idea is don't get attached to anything. Don't learn your lines. Try not to be attached to any of the scenes that you think you might be shooting and just turn up and it's like a workshop almost. It's a very tricky thing. I, I don't think Hugh was a particular fan of it <laughs> because he had, you know, for him it was much more difficult because he had a much more in-depth pieces of monologues. You know, they, he had a lot more to say. And I think to kind of go away and learn these big speeches and then to come in and go, hang on, I've just learned, I spent fucking three days learning that speech. What do you mean you've changed all my lines? So for some, for a character like Hugh, Hugh that Hugh was playing, I, I think it'd be much more frustrating because you would have put time and efforts into them. So a little easier for myself because he was a less sort of vocal sort of character. But it's, nevertheless, it's still, uh, it's still the process that Guy likes. And same with the action. Turn up, work it out on the day. No rehearsals, no stunt training, no stuntmen. This is what we're doing. This is how we're doing it. It's, it's literally like student filmmaking, <laughs> but in a, in a most professional way, of course. One of the things about Aubrey is that she is so funny. And I would imagine working with her because she's, in, you know, she's so good at imp improvisation. Uh, how many times did she actually get you to break on camera? Uh, many. She is so funny. I mean, she's, again, she's got incredible improvisational skills and a lot of the funny lines that she delivers actually came from her. You know, she's so good and she's unconventional to the, to a point that you could never put your finger on how, how quirky and how funny she is. Her timing is so great and she's just, so watchable. She's my new favorite actress. I love Aubrey Plaza. Well, it's interesting. I, I spoke to Guy and I asked him, um, what do I need to do to get uh, you and Jason to make 10 more movies? And he said that uh, uh, that's going to happen. Don't worry. And then he was giving you shit about his next movie in Spain and uh, how he, you're not going to be in it. But, you know, uh, anyway, but it made it seem like I'm so happy that you guys are back working together. Have you both talked about other projects that you want to do? Uh, yeah, we have, but, but, you know, we're trying to figure it out. I mean, we don't want to just, you know, he, I think it's great that he's going to do a movie. I'm going to go do uh, a sequel to the Meg, you know, we're just about to start shooting that. Uh, and I think it might be nice to have a little break. He'll shoot one. I'll shoot one. We'll, we'll come back and figure something out. We, we just, we enjoy the process. We love what we do and we love it more when we're doing it together. Um, you have done such awesome action set pieces. Uh, I really just love watching you kick ass. Um, and I'm just curious, when you think back on the ones that you've done, which was the one or two that you're like, oh, this is this is pretty dangerous. This is pretty hard. There have been a couple of situations. You know, we was, I think when we was, when I shot Crank, we were hanging out of a, the, the, a real, we was on a helicopter. You know, a lot of the things you do now with expendables and anytime you're on a helicopter, it's usually on a green screen. Uh, but with Crank, we were we were actually in a helicopter. We were shooting a fight scene where we was standing on the skids. We have a, a small pick there. So it was a real stunt. You know, that one was pretty tricky. There was some, there was a couple of sort of jumps in that movie over this car park. I was hanging on a gold tail. It's quite a, almost like a blind jump. And, you know, there was a, a few gig, few things in that gig that were pretty tricky. I I I did a, a little jump in the transport, a, a transport of two, where I jumped from the back of a jet ski onto the back of a bus that wasn't, it wasn't a very safe stunt. I shouldn't have done it. There was no safety wire, but I just did that. I mean, if I'd have, if I'd have missed the back of the bus, it would have been a, you know, face plant at 30 miles an hour into the concrete. These silly things that I've done. Most of the most annoying things, you know, like I've, I've had a torn bicep, you know, you have to try and finish the movie. Most of the th things are just real niggles and problems with your soft tissue and your joints. Uh, you know, I've, I've hurt my neck. I've, I've got so many injuries that have accumulated over the past, just doing stunts and hitting the ground and, you know, in, in the mechanic, 
the sequel to the mechanic. I really screwed up my neck doing this jump into a into a from one high platform on the back of the boat into this, you know, dinghy taking a couple of shots. I've done a I've done a lot of silly stunts that I didn't need to do that I could have just relied on a double to do. And I think my my physical self would have been in much I would be in a much better position. I've just got a they've taken their toll. You know, I'm, I'm nursing a lot of bad injuries. Stallone in himself, he, he's, he's got a roadmap of injuries over the course of his career. And, he, you know, a lot of the things we do, it's because our ego gets in front of us and we want to, we want to, we want it to be authentic. We want people to see that that's us doing it. We want the, uh, the audience to go for the ride. Uh, and a lot of the decisions, I think I'm getting a bit smarter now. I think I'll, you know, I'll try and uh, I'll try and be smarter because of the necessity to be smarter, as my body's wearing out a little bit. <laughs> Some of the little I, niggles, anyway. I completely understand. Um, I seriously just want to thank you for your work. You've re I really enjoy watching you work. I'm out of time. I just want to say congrats on the movie. I wish you nothing but the best. Thanks, Steve. Always a pleasure talking to you. Respect. See ya.